Hello to all of our wonderful Baselight supporters and welcome to another session of the Baselight Learning Programme. Today I'm going to be covering formats in Baselight. Now this tutorial has actually been available for a while on our website um, but we're including it here as part of the Baselight Learning Programme. In today's session, I'm going to be covering an introduction to formats and format mappings in Baselight, and we'll look at how to create a custom mapping using the formats editor in Baselight. Um, as always, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to put them in the chat and I'll answer them uh, as we go through. So let's get started. When creating content for the screen, there has always been a need to handle source footage which was shot in a different aspect ratio to the screen on which it will be displayed. For example, 35mm film was traditionally shot with a frame size of 22 by 16mm, which equates to an aspect ratio of about 1.37 to 1. If the pictures from this film were to be viewed on a widescreen TV, which has an aspect ratio of 16 by 9, or about 1.78 to 1, then a decision would be made on how to map the square aspect of the film frame into the wider aspect of the TV frame. Typically, one of two options is chosen. Either fit the full width of the original film frame into the TV frame and lose some of the top and the bottom of the image, or fit the full height of the film frame into the TV frame. In the latter case, you will see everything which was shot, but the image no longer looks widescreen and would have black bars on either side. There is a third option of filling the entire TV screen with all of the original film frame, but in order to do this, the image would become stretched horizontally, which is something you wouldn't want to do in most cases. If a scene is shot using an anamorphic lens, then the image recorded on the film frame or digital sensor appears squashed horizontally, typically by a factor of two to one. In order to reproduce the original image, it needs to be stretched by the same factor, giving a much wider frame. Again, as this is not the same aspect ratio as the widescreen TV frame, a choice has to be made how to map the source image into the destination frame, either to fit the width or fit the height. These days, it's very common for projects to use a mixture of source footage with different resolutions and aspect ratios, each requiring a different mapping into the intended screen aspect ratio. When working in baselight or daylight, unless all your source footage has the same resolution and aspect ratio as your scene, and also the grading display and deliverables, a format mapping will be applied at some point. In this tutorial, I will explain how formats work when transforming images between different aspect ratios and resolutions. Every base light or daylight scene is set to a specific frame size and aspect ratio. This is defined by the scene's working format when the scene is first created. It's worth pointing out that you can't change the resolution of the scene once you've set the working format. However, as you'll see later, you can still render to a different resolution. When you import footage into the scene, either by conforming an EDL or inserting it using FluxManage, it will automatically be tagged with an input format, derived from its horizontal and vertical resolution. The input format is shown in the geometry section of the parameters view when layer 0 is selected. In this example, you can see that this shot has an input format of 5120 by 2160. These are the dimensions of the source media. As the pixels are square, this gives an aspect ratio of 2.37 to 1. If I switch over to the image display, you can see that the source shot has been scaled so that the width fits exactly into the frame. The image display is currently set to a viewing format of HD 1920 by 1080, which is an aspect ratio of about 1.78 to 1. So the 2.37 to 1 source image appears letterboxed in the HD frame. Note that the viewing format is normally set to match the working format, which in this case is HD 1920 by 1080. The working format is shown in blue at the top right hand corner of the UI screen. 
and the viewing format is set as part of the cursor settings. There are situations where you may want to use a different viewing format to the working format. I'll explain more about that later, but for now I'll just leave it set so that the viewing format is the same as the working format. If I move on to the next shot, you can see that the input format is 2048 by 1536, which is an aspect ratio of 1.33 to 1, or 4 by 3. This shot has also been scaled so that its width fits exactly into the 16 by 9 working format. So in this case, the top and bottom of the image are cropped off. Of course, you can't tell that here, but if I find the source shot in Flux Manage, you can see the thumbnail has a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. If I click on the preview button, we can see the original full uncropped frame in the image viewer. If I now move on to the third shot, again, you'll notice that it is shown in a letterbox. The input format is 2880 by 2160, which would give an aspect ratio of 1.33 to 1, as in the previous shot. However, in this case, the pixel aspect ratio of the input format has been set to 2 to 1, as this is an anamorphic shot. So the image is being stretched horizontally by a factor of 2, giving an image aspect ratio of 2.66 to 1. Again, if we check the source shot in Flux Manage, we can see the original media in the thumbnail. Now you may have noticed that the input formats for all these shots are shown in brackets. The brackets indicate that the system is automatically applying a basic format. Basic formats will always be mapped such that the width of the source fits into the width of the destination. OK, so what if we don't want a shot to be mapped so that its width fits into the width of the destination? For example, we may want to fit the height of the widescreen shots into the height of the working format and crop off the sides. Or we may want to see the top of the 4x3 shot rather than the middle, which is the default mapping. Well, one way to do that is to add a transform operator and use it to scale and shift the image. However, if we want to automatically apply the same mapping to all the shots which have the same input format, we can specify a custom mapping between the input format and the working format. Now it isn't possible to modify a basic format, as this is created automatically by the system when no other formats matching the input are available. So in order to create a custom mapping, first we need to create a new named input format. That can be done by clicking on the Convert Basic Format button here. This opens a Create Format dialog box. I'll enter a name for the new format, and it's a good idea to use a name which most usefully describes the format. Sometimes this may be a specific mapping for a certain camera in just one scene, for example. There is a button below this which allows you to add the new format to either just the current scene or alternatively, you can make it available to other scenes in the current job, or globally available. I'll explain more about that later, but for now, I'll just leave it set to Add to Scene Formats. Now you'll see that the input format for this shot is set to Red 5K Wide Fill HD, but at this point it still has the same basic mapping applied. So now we need to set up the mapping we want by editing this new format. Formats are edited using the Formats Editor, which is accessed from the main base light or daylight menu at the top of the UI screen. You can also open the Formats Editor view using the Windows F keyboard shortcut, or Control Shift and F if you're working on a Mac. You can see the format I just created in the list of formats here. This list also includes all the formats available to this scene. Notice that there are several standard formats already included in this list. 
These are preset factory formats, as indicated by this icon. They include various standard default mappings, as well as some preset metadata burn-in templates. Note that if there is a format in this list which matches the input resolution of a shot, then the system would automatically choose that format as the input format for the shot, rather than using the basic format. If I temporarily switch over to Flux Manage and click on a few of the shots in this directory, you'll see that Flux Manage automatically chooses formats from this list if they match the shot's resolution. If there is no match, then a basic format is applied, as shown by the brackets around the format name. If you want to hide the factory formats from the list, you can turn off Show Factory Formats in the Options menu. This makes it easier to see just the non-basic formats which are currently in use in this scene. OK, now I'll select the 5K format I just created. Before I create the custom mapping, let's just have a look at the different parts of the Formats Editor window. First, there's the list of formats down the left-hand side. The Options button at the top allows us to show or hide certain types of format and also reload the job or global formats. I'll explain more about that in part two. You can also hide individual formats to simplify the list. At the top of the window are four buttons labelled Factory, Global, Job and Scene Format. Again, I'll explain more about those later. Below them are the Resolution and Proxies settings. This is where the width and height of the image is specified in pixels. Notice that as well as the base resolution, which is the actual resolution of the format, there are also two proxy resolutions. These enable the system to work at a lower resolution in order to reduce the processing power required and improve performance while grading. The medium and low resolution proxies are normally set to a half and a quarter the base resolution. This can be done automatically by clicking on the Set Medium Low From Base button. There's also a Set Medium Low For Raw Data button. If I click on this, you will notice that the medium proxy resolution is now set to the same as the base resolution, and the low proxy resolution is set to half that. This caters for working with certain RAW formats, such as R3D, which provide a half resolution setting within the decoder to provide better performance. More detail about working with raw formats and proxies can be found in the Baselight user documentation. Another thing we need to specify when defining the format is the pixel aspect ratio. The default setting is 1, which would give square pixels, but this can be changed to any value required. For example, anamorphic formats typically use a pixel aspect ratio of 1.5 or 2. Note that the resultant image aspect ratio is displayed up here. Below the resolution settings are three tabs which allow different masks, mappings and burn-ins to be defined for each format. OK, so I'll now create the custom mapping. First, I'll make sure that the format I want to create the mapping from is selected. In this case, it's the red 5K format I just created and then I'll click on the Mappings tab. Now I'll click on the New button here. This is a list of all available formats, including the factory formats. I need to choose the format I want to map into, so in this case, as I want to create a mapping to the working format, I'll choose HD 1920 by 1080. Note that you can only have a single mapping between any two formats. This means that formats which are already mapped will not appear in this list. When I click on the Add button, the mapping appears in the Source and Destination graphics on the right. You can see that initially the basic Fit Width mapping is applied. However, I can now adjust the mapping by entering different transform values. You'll need to do a few calculations if you want to work out the scaling and translation values manually. However, in this case, as I simply want to fit the height of the source into the height of the destination, I can click on the Inside button and change it to Outside. 
This has now calculated the correct transform values automatically to provide a centered mapping which fills the frame exactly. Now you can see that the source frame fits the height of the destination frame and the edges are cropped off. As formats are updated live, the new mapping has already been applied in the image display. If I toggle the inside outside mapping button, you can see how it changes the mapping to fit either the width or the height into the frame. So I've now created a new format in this scene and defined a custom mapping to the HD 1920x1080 format. This shot is now set to use this new input format, but I can switch it back to the basic format again if I want to. Note that if I accidentally choose a format which doesn't match the input resolution, then all I see is a big fat X, as the system can't read the expected number of pixels from the source media file. OK, now that I've defined this new 5K format, it can be used for any other shots which have the same resolution. For example, if I click on this shot in Flux Manage, you'll see that at the bottom of the window, it's automatically chosen the format I created, rather than a basic format. And if I insert it into the scene, its input format will be set to red 5K wide fill HD. I can still change it back to the basic format or any other format which matches the resolution. In this example, I've been using Flux Manage to insert sequences into the scene and Flux Manage has been setting the input resolution. However, a similar mechanism exists for EDL Conform. The EDL Import tool will also apply an input format which matches the resolution of each shot. Like Flux Manage, it will choose formats from the list of formats in the scene, if they exist. Otherwise, a basic format will be applied. I should point out that although the input format defines a specific mapping to the working format, this is just the default mapping which will be applied between these two formats. You can still add a transform operator if you want to shift or scale the source. So that's one example of a custom format mapping. In this case, I want to change the default mapping for my widescreen 5K shots so that when they are imported into an HD scene, they will fit into the height of the scene rather than the width. Okay, so I didn't see any questions uh, in the chat. Um, so I assume you followed that uh, all okay. Uh, obviously formats and baselight are very powerful and that uh, video just covered uh, an overview and a basic introduction to mappings. Um, if you want to find out more, you can uh, go to the website and check out the other two videos which cover more advanced features of Baselight formats. Uh, we will be covering them later in the Baselight Learning Program too. Um, so thanks again for watching and uh, this particular video will also be available in the Baselight Learning Program section uh, shortly uh, once I've edited it. So bye for now.